Hi. Hi there and welcome to episode 108. What? Of the ADHD Adults podcast. I'm in a lot of pain. My back's fucked and these two are loving it, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I'm you James Brown. Like a crab. I can't. Mm. Let, I mean, Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm in pain. I'm trying to do just the first bit of the podcast. We're all tired. Everyone's tired. I'm James Brown, the man who hopes Alexi Thymia is a shit 70s sci-fi film. And as usual, I'm joined by the man who they would have probably named after, Dr. Alex Connor. And of course, the woman who struggles to explain anything, including how she's feeling, Mrs. ADHD. Alex, hi. Alexi Thymia to you? <laughs> Just blown snot out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> James laughed at the sheer incredulousness <laughs> of someone saying that. <laughs> to, I mean, literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. And Sam, hi. Hiya. Good. Um, how are you both? Mrs. ADHD first. I'm glad no one fucking asks me this question, by the way. Yeah. I mean, we can see how you are. You've just done yeah. nothing but moan all morning and barely yeah. walk. Yeah. Um, I Wait, fucked my shoulder. Get in the room. I fucked my shoulder up, so I'm not very happy. I'm so sorry, Sam. I hope it gets better soon. <laughs> How are you, Alex? It's amazing. Excellent, thank you, James. Um, <laughs> massively. <laughs> Don't massively ask overcommitted. He's clearly in pain. Don't ask him. Yeah, I'll we'll just do his thing. I've yeah. massively overcommitted to lots of admittedly very exciting projects. And yesterday I spent an hour trying to figure out the difference between owls and their noises. I still don't know. Instead of, yeah, what I was supposed to do. And that sort of ADHD gold, I think, is why the listener number is freakishly high. The tech guy told Sam and me yesterday that we're in the we're in top 100 global podcasts for trending based on weekly listeners, but we don't know what that means. <laughs> you can so tell you were reading that out, and I still don't yeah, understand um, what it means. It's just in top 100. <laughs> I don't I don't know what it means. And um, what we do know though is one of them sent us a letter. I'm too tired to even stop you. Just go. <laughs> That's right, James. It's from a Robert from Kidderminster in a way. It says. I listened to snippets of your almost hour-long Thursday episode rant. I think you're deceiving your listeners a bit. Pretending James watched Panorama, he's usually baffled by John Craven's news round. Thanks for that reference, James, uh, Robert. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Good, good letter, good letter. We've had a real letter, though. I'm going to read it out. No, it says, no. it's from Joe Paul, it says, just realised, James, I saw you in daylight yesterday. How are the birds? <laughs> that, isn't, that is a letter, but not the one that ah, we put in the script. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> the, the actual letter is from uh, Adam. It says, howdy, which I adore. I just thought that I'd drop your line to say thanks for making me realise that I am potentially not an abject turd. I've been speaking to a friend about some of the issues and behaviours I've been putting up with since childhood. And she suggested I look into ADHD. I found your podcast. Shush, Google. I found your podcast, realised it sounds like me. Tried talking to people in the past and they'd maybe unwittingly diminished or appropriated my experience. I mean, none of us can relate to that, Adam. It really struck a chord when you talked about someone saying they also forgot what they went into a room for too. And the response was along the lines of, what, 30 times per day? <laughs> exactly. I like Adam. So I did the online questionnaire uh, that you linked to on your website and scored four marks across the board. Congratulations <laughs> on your disability. So I've spent the past few weeks trying to reflect on my experience using your template as a guide. Self-reflection is no mean feat for uh, someone who struggles to concentrate and gets distracted by shiny stuff. Me who, long story short, Adam and I would get on. Long story short, I took a day off work battled anxiety of not being believed and rang the doctor for consultation and I'm in the process of being referred to a psychiatrist. The wait may be long, but it feels like a true wait is off to be going under the process of being referred. Thanks again. I'm really grateful. All the best. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but it is it's funny. Though, so I don't know do why that. it's so funny. I know. It's because it's it's you, you know he's actually really in pain, I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, thanks, I know Adam. he's genuinely in pain. Yeah, yeah, that's what's funny about it. Internationally, James, great question. Um, 
<laughs> if I look at my notes, we are up exactly one country to 156 countries. What are the chances? Null point. This week's country is almost certainly not Taiwan, where one of the languages spoken is Taiwanese Hokkien, says it. So, Li Hobo, I hope, to a random sadistic police officer in Taiwan who actually plays the podcast on repeat to elicit confessions. Hello. <laughs> I mean, it would work for that. Anyway, <clears throat> this isn't going to go well. As usual, this driver of a 1996 BMW 328i that takes up two spaces as Aldi as their car is far more important than, you know, people of a podcast <laughs> is a tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme. Last week we talked, uh, did we talk about ADHD and trauma? I don't know. I'm in a lot of pain. Um, we um, did on Monday and then we did okay. panorama on Thursday. Brilliant. And this week we're focusing on a topic that several people have asked about, including Rebecca and Random as Duck, and that is ADHD and alexithymia which Alex will explain poorly in a bit. As usual, the three parts include the Leonard Cohen of evidence, Alex the psycho education monkey, telling us all about the topic, our personal reflections on the theme, <laughs> and top tips, tips, Gabby Loganing, I don't know. I'm in Not pain, Alex. Gabby Logan thing. Just, a- a- Alex, how do you feel about this episode? Oh, uh, you've done a joke. You've done an actual joke mm, with a punchline yes, that isn't yes. sort of clever and meta and sort of self <laughs> Not unlike you, you'll be on Saturday night before you know it. It was a shit joke as well, so well done. Okay, as we all know, probably by now, the core diagnostic areas of ADHD are those three things, inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. And as we often ask, what are emotions? (laughs) No, that's just me. We ask, what about the emotional side of ADHD? Because almost all of us with ADHD have at least some level the lack of regulation of our emotions. And it's not even in the flipping name. One of the pioneers in science of ADHD research, Paul Vender, suggested that three additional symptom categories might be useful. And these relate to emotional regulation. So affective or emotional lability, like change, hot temper, that's what I've got, and stress intolerance. He might have been on something there, James. I agree with him. <laughs> Smug face. <laughs> so while this can include um, inappropriate emotional responses, so like over or absolutely crucially, because people don't realise this often, underreacting to things, one of the curious manifestations of our, our brain emotionally processing and how we process um, incorrectly sometimes is alexithymia. I've got a joke. You ready? I haven't got the words for how I feel about the term alexithymia, James. I mean, joke is pushing it, isn't it? I'm yeah, stretching the definition of Sorry. the term. What was that a joke? Because, Sam, uh, because the name alexithymia coined in 1973 from the Greek, a lexis, meaning no words, and thymos, which means flask of tea. No, it doesn't. It means, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It means emotion. So a lack of words about emotion. I don't have the words of how I'm feeling, you see. And it refers to a a whole cluster of behavioural characteristics related to how we express and experience effects of emotion. I don't... I don't understand what you're saying. (laughs) Excellent question, Sam. (laughs) So wasn't really a question, but it was. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's a bit, you know, metacognition, where we sort of don't know our own mind in the right way sometimes. Kind of. that but for emotions. So, you know, when people ask, how are you feeling? Hmm. And you're like, I don't know. Why are you asking me? (laughs) I I think when we do personal experiences in part two, this is going to help us clarify a lot of this. So let's deal with some boring science first. Okay. Lexithyme includes problems with identifying, verbalizing, analyzing our feelings, emotional, also sometimes physical feelings about things, such as describing pain, So both the experience and ability to express to others these feelings is knackered. About the same time, a slightly different way to describe lexithymia was defined as having difficulty identifying feelings and differentiating among the range of common emotions. Am I happy or am I just cold? That kind of thing. And distinguishing between feelings and bodily sensations of emotional arousal. Stop it. (laughs) <laughs> having strong emotions like anger and getting confused with 
with our emotional and physical sensations. Difficulty finding the words to describe these feelings to other people. So also constricted imagination and thought content, pre preoccupied with minute details of external emotional events or physical events. Lastly, people with high alexithymia levels can have difficulties in recognizing and empathizing with the emotional states of others, <laughs> other people, not just other things. Ah, uh, but sorry, uh, you know I've got way too much empathy that you used way to too much, <laughs> both yeah. laugh at me about, but then yeah, you realise that empathy. I might have. Uh, yeah. But sometimes it's for objects or animals and not people. Is that what yeah. you mean? I laugh at you for this, and that is an ableist thing to do. Interesting, though, very interesting question, because most of the research into alexithymia, and when we talk about neurodivergence as well, it, it's generally been done in the ASD or ASC community. Mm. So autism, shorthand. There is some evidence that, because alexithymia is, is associated with atypical empathy, which means different, not worse, or less empathy. Right. Some people who are alexithymic can, in fact, feel empathy for things that aren't human, like your car, Sam, or James. This, <laughs> when, we <laughs> when we personify objects, it might be why some people report even object personification synesthesia. You know, when people have romantic feelings to things like mm. Bridges or James, <laughs> why does it happen? Mm. Well, it is said to be linked to basic emotional processing deficits. So the brain has to take these emotions, which are really old things, aren't they? But we process them as humans. The dogs don't go, well, why did I feel like that, Stephen? You but don't know that. Do. Dogs might go like that. You don't know. No, we do. They're a reactive species. That's We know that. That is what they are. Okay. Humans aren't, though. <laughs> they have to process emotions. And cognitively, they and we it might be linked to deficits in that rather than dysfunction of these fully high order emotional regulations. And that processing might be why people with ADHD have issue issues with emotion. Mm. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. I just said I just mentioned ADHD, though, didn't I? <laughs> Give yeah. me a blooming chance. <laughs> so re research has shown close association. Okay. I can't do it. Sorry, Birmingham. Ow. Close associations between alexithymia and other emotional processing problems or issues in ADHD. So accepting our own emotions has a link with alexithymia and to a, a lesser extent, being fl completely flooded with emotions has oh. been reported as well. But so far, no link found with respect to experiences of emotion regulation or experiences of self-control, which we struggle with as well. One study, I mean, admittedly not great, small, suggested a whopping 41.5% of people with ADHD had alexithymia. And levels of impulsiveness predicted alexithymia in their study. So a mo impulse, mo alexithymia vitiati. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw what it said. <laughs> yeah, in the script, James has written, read that UC word, which he likes to make me say. <laughs> so this figure, 40%, might be about right. In our closely related ASDs, as in cousins, I prefer brothers in arms, where much more research into alexithymia has been done in autism, it is thought that alexithymia is prevent, present in <laughs> roughly half. <laughs> Of 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 people who are autistic, the prevalence <laughs> rates of Alexia. Are you gone, Sam? Have you lost it? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Sam identifies as autistic, and James, obviously, in our private life, is mean about that, as we're mean about each other all the time. And what he wrote was, I'm just going to say, <laughs> unprofessional. The prevalence <laughs> rates of Alexia are higher among individuals with substance abuse. Hello, oh. and addictive problems. Hello, than in the general population, which you know, James also. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, what about other people's emotions? Because if we're shit at describing our own, what about mm. kind of dealing with other people's emotions? You are in pain, aren't you? That was a good yes. question, a reasonable question, <laughs> passable. Four out of ten, <laughs> delivered though in a crass and thick way. Several studies <laughs> looking at 
the ability in identifying facial expressions of emotion in children and adults, which we all know in ASD, that's a really uh, complex and difficult thing. Mm. So ADHD children, in, on average, obviously, performed worse than typically developing children on face, face emotion recognition. And they made more mistakes matching facial emotions with appropriate context. In adult ADHD, some ADHD subjects took a longer time and were less accurate than their boring normal counterparts in emotional face recognition tasks. And so, there's some small evidence that we're okay at cognitive empathy, so understanding how people are feeling, but maybe certainly as children, slightly less. Less? Lightly less. <laughs> slightly less good in feeling that in emotional empathy. Oh, that was shit as always. Um, we'll be back in part two <laughs> to to carry on being shit or something. I don't. I'm in pain. Good. Good. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Jesus, already. Welcome back to episode 108 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. This is part two, where we talk personal reflections, and as always. <laughs> We're talking about Alexi Pimia and ADHD. I've read the script the wrong way around. Oh, God. James, you're in pain, so why don't you go first? <laughs> Any personal reflections of Alexi almost, Pimia and or? That's almost it literally is. a hospital pass, Al, because at the minute I actually feel like I do need to go to hospital. Oh, God. Yeah. So, of course, um, first of all, I definitely knew this was the thing. Always did. Didn't, <laughs> um, didn't only recently discover that this was something in in ADHD it's something that for many years I've um, <clears throat> pondered um, <laughs> but now now I've had a chance to talk about it and not just think about it in the last three days <laughs> I can I can never explain how I feel emotionally or almost never now bear in mind that I have a mood disorder which means that my mood can be very very low I can describe that mm -hmm. and it can be hypomanic I'm less good at describing that but the bits in between I, I, I don't know, even now, trying to think how I feel. If you take the, 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 the very severe pain I'm in at the question now and said, how are you feeling? I'll often say, okay, but that's just because what people say. I don't know how I feel. I, I don't know. I don't know really what happiness is because I'm married to Sam. I don't, I don't really. I, and I absolutely love it, James, that you get angry when you, when, if I ask you sometimes, are oh, you feeling like this? No, no, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. furious. Yeah, and it's it's something that I've, I've never really thought about when when other people are able to really just verbalise simple things. I'm I'd love to 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 talk really more to Sam's personal reflections, and I'm sure we will. And she'll mention yeah. particularly the physical thing, because before before I you know before I'd known about this for years, many years, and Sam would often say you know that she had some ailment the way in which she described it bear in mind as a biomedical scientist i was able to at least point her in the direction of it might be at x y and z i'd always go what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> you've got you've got a niggle somewhere in the upper third of your chest and it makes you feel wiggly what you know what does that mean um, you know <laughs> yeah uh, so some I, I i struggle i genuinely struggle to explain my emotions to anybody but Again, having known about this for years and not just researching in the last three days, I also clearly struggle with anyone less transparent than Mrs. ADHD when it comes <laughs> to their emotional state. So unless somebody is screaming in my face, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm excited. I don't, I don't know. I don't have, mm. I can't pick up some of those social cues um, to accurately understand somebody else's emotional state. And that can obviously be challenging in a, in a work context in a friend context, if you don't know that somebody is particularly upset or, or, or something and you just, it made me actually think recently, Alex, that I don't have any empathy. I've been thinking about this a lot. And, and I, I know we've talked about the difference in cognitive empathy and emotional empathy. And I think I probably do, but at times I genuinely think I don't really care. Maybe I fake it. I don't know. It's, it's odd. You do also, care. Yeah. I, I do. I but... That's a lie. 
I think actually, James, it hurts you sometimes. So you try, you damp it down, right? Because it, yeah. you're, I think you're quite strongly emotionally empathic, but you don't like it. If you don't, I know that's telling you who you are and you shouldn't do that, but I do know I you mean, quite do, well. I mean, you tell me I'm a vampire pretty much on a daily basis. and Well, stop biting it's... people. I'll stop calling you a fucking vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, and just finally, the physical thing again, totally get it. Am I tired? I mean, yes. Am I ill? I mean, obviously quite often, but it's it's hard for me to sometimes work out, is the feeling just normal tiredness or is it burnout? Do I feel genuinely ill or is it just, you know, like my battery is low? Am, am I just flat? It's so hard. Ding. Ding. Um, Samantha slash Mrs. ADHD. What about you? Oh God, this is going to take ages. No, I don't know if it will, because I've said it all before, really, haven't I? Um, I think we recognised on one thing podcast um that this was the thing that I had um I yeah I find it really really difficult to describe how I'm feeling physically and emotionally like you said in the past I've described things to you and you're like what and mm. I, it'll be something really specific I feel like there's like a tube inside my stomach here that's there's something in it that's irritating this and it's it like really really yeah or and it'll be really specific like that or just I don't know there's something going on here and I just can't describe it imagine being her GP I know. just for a second when she oh, turns God. up and says yeah yeah no my bi-bobbity feels like it's um <laughs> feels like it's it's slightly wrenched on the on the on the upper side should have to face that it is no wonder now that i was misdiagnosed for like 16 years when i had endometriosis because i can't differentiate sometimes the difference between my womb and my stomach i just know i've got some pain here it was so bad they sent you to a vet for three years didn't they (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> face. you know oh what's brilliant God. is that your t-shirt because of the framing of your camera it just says tories like an advert <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> tories yeah up the, the tories. Same shirt. <laughs> uh, um, yeah tories lie bab um what was the saying <laughs> i think you'd finished oh yeah no i can get over uh, overwhelmed by emotion as well when you were saying that I thought oh my god yeah sometimes it feels like I've just got a big fog of emotions I know that I'm feeling really strong emotions but I don't know exactly what they are they all kind of blend together and just overwhelm me and then I can completely shut down and I get this with other people too I can see that they're feeling strong emotions and it overwhelms me and and sometimes and this is really bad but sometimes it can lead to me avoiding people because I catch emotions and I take I I take them on like so deeply that it really I feel like I can feel what they're feeling and it really hurts me and so sometimes say sometimes if James is really really low sometimes I'll purposely stay away from him not only to protect myself from feeling those emotions but to stop me going to the same place as him and then what happens is I then feel all those emotions that he's feeling and then he feels even worse because he's made me feel those emotions and then I feel bad for making him feel those emotions and we're both all feeling bad so it's better to just fucking stay away I don't know if that's something that's common um (laughs) it's different because that that's you know, there's a really classic ASD phenomenon like that of, of people think because of the facial difference in facial expressions in the autistic community that they, you know, that they, you know, Volkers don't feel emotions. It's really not, it's completely bullshit. It's opposite yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah really, really opposite. And, and like we've said, mm. even for objects, I can, I can feel emotions and yep. animals, I really can much more than people. But like last night we were watching something, we had to switch it off because I, I feel like I see emotions on the screen and I viscerally feel them to the point that I am hysterical and James will have to switch it off. Yeah, she did the funny cry last night, didn't you? And <laughs> oh, I, and I actually, a long time. No, I know, I know. I do try. So we probably I'm mentioned screaming. this before. I do try and record the funny cry so many yeah. times. I've tried to because 
and this is and this is now like a, a, a an inherent immediate reaction I have, and I know people are going to think that I'm a bastard for this, but I start laughing, and it's the loudest and hardest I laugh at anything when Sam cries because it's hilarious. It's not just a normal cry. It, it, I mean, Sam's laughing now for those who can't see, but it is hilarious. But even no, but last night, Al, this was to the extent I thought. I'm not going to reach my phone and even slightly try and record it. It was like, I don't it was, think you even laughed. Yeah, she was screaming. Yeah. At the television. And it was about TV. Yeah, yeah. I, I could, it was, I can't even think about it now because I'm feeling it again. Can I, can I also, think about it now. Can I, yeah. <laughs> and we both do this to her, don't we, to try and get this. <laughs> yeah. <crazy. laughs> Can I, can I just add as can I just add because Sam, Sam we'll, we'll get you to talk about this more on Thursday, but yeah. Sam's. <clears throat> I'm going to get this wrong. Anthropomorphification, anthropomorphization, nice. one or the other of personification. Of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Of um, inanimate objects is incredible to the point where when we were doing, uh, we did a talk this week. You know, you know, I do talks, Al. You look, oh, these little talks. Yeah. Um, it's clear that the the case that she uses is fucked. I've used it before. The wheels don't work. And I said, thinking, <clears throat> this is be kind, I'll get you a new case. And she looked at me and went, no, this this one's fine. And I said, no, the, the wheels are knackered. She went, no, 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 it's, it, it's fine. It's fine. And I said, you like that case, don't you? And she said, yeah, yeah I, don't wa- I don't want to change it. Don't talk, don't talk about it being changed in front of it. <laughs> Do you want me to take it behind the bins and kick it to pieces? No. I don't know. Yes. I don't. You're making me cry <laughs> now just thinking about it. Took, I, took I took one over to Ibiza with some, some boxing gear from my mate Frankie and the wheels were so knackered. I said, can you fucking smash it with a sledgehammer? When I, and yeah. when I came back and told Sam that I hadn't brought it back, she was devastated oh. that I'd left a case. Just leave it somewhere on its own, Sam. Stop it. <laughs> That's awful. That's awful. <clears throat> awful. Yeah, anyway, uh, awful. well, Sam... Yeah, while Sam's crying, I was about to say, "What about you, Al?" But she yeah. stopped crying now, so she can say it. Yeah, um, I do have loads of this, and it's it's really interesting. I don't process pain properly. We've talked about this a lot. People used to call me a hypochondriac. It, it wasn't really anxiety. It was that I didn't know. Yeah, like, and it can it both ways. Ding, um, hmm. I I can have like physically, I can take a lot of pain. <laughs> 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 I don't and or and sometimes yeah and I don't really know it's hot really can't explain it I say to lovely Lisa all the time, my German wife all the time as opposed um, to the one that's not German that's a, yeah <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> I was talking to a, a friend on Twitter who I can't name because I haven't asked her about this and she said something much much worse about <laughs> I can't, I can't, she, <laughs> her white presenting boyfriend, she's, it's, honestly, <laughs> it's a brilliant, yeah, I, I, you know who you are, um, so I don't, yeah, I don't process things properly, I often say to, to my German wife, what, what, is what I'm feeling real, is that, is any of that, is that making, am I being, is that insane, is that real, am I feeling this, I just haven't got a clue, people think I'm really emotionally empathic, Sam, they do, whatever you say, because I, I'm good at it. I can read emotions, but I, I don't care about them. I don't think, I do, I care that people are generally healthy, but like, I don't, I've got loads of processing power to understand people because I don't feel what they feel like you. I find oh. it amazing and interesting how you do. Oh. I, I used to get angry because people would always say the same thing about my sort of semi-sociopathy, which is, Oh, actually, I would love that. That must be really relaxing. And I used to get angry because sometimes feel guilty about it. But uh, since emotional acceptance, blah, 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 you're fucking right. It's brill. Yeah, I would it, love it. It is nice. Yeah, it is, it is actually nice. I don't feel that stuff you do mm. very much. I mean, a yeah. bit, but not not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a sausage in a spit, it's emotions for me. <laughs> yeah, it, my facial expression, my body lies to everybody as well. I don't know if that's part of it. So it's sort of the way I express emotions, either con- cognitively or even subconsciously, isn't right? People tell me who I am all the time incorrectly. You're a cunt. See, you're really, this is meaningful to you. I can see, you know, that, that's accurate. I was just I was just thinking, is it anything to do with the kind of sphericity of your head and that people can't recognise in a perfectly round face? Yeah. Because it's slightly different to the way in which... Melon. You're... <laughs> I can see you're nervous. I can see you really care about this. I can see you're really upset. 
<laughs> fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> None of those they things. Do, do you know what I am? Do not Hungry know. and bored. <laughs> but I'm wiggly. Mm. Yeah, that's it, really. So, yes, I do really struggle to express them. And I don't understand my own emotions. That's in blooming nutshell. Right. No time for the game this week. No, we have. Uh, thank, you, th- thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I definitely heard all of it and wasn't ignoring because I'm in pain. Now, we do have time for a game, Alex. And honestly, I, I, I promise you this with all the sincerity that I can muster for you. I yeah. haven't done this just because you're 11 8 in the lead and I want you to lose. But I obviously, I've been very busy this week. We all have post Panorama. And yeah. <clears throat> I didn't have time to open yeah. the Word file with my games. So I've, I've hastily scribbled down the game. Okay. And this is what I can make of my notes. So, yeah, uh, the the thing that I forgot, lost, or forgotten looks like it says meds. Okay, okay. one meds. And op- an theme? option, yeah, option one looks like mooing plun. Okay, mooing plun. Yeah. <laughs> op- option two yeah. is worry ident. <laughs> okay, worry ident. And option three is forgotten walkout. Forgotten. Forgot in walkout. Right, forgot in walkout. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Moon blue. <laughs> Have you thought about joining the boxing commissions <laughs> refereeing? Yeah, yeah. That's it's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, I think that you've lost your mind because of what is admittedly <laughs> a tiny little bit of back owie. <laughs> Unlike Sam, who's hurt her shoulder, James. I hurt my shoulder. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> and and I've got an itch. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, Alex, you've got a pick one. It's moon plan, whatever the second one was, and forgotten really? what I am. Yeah. Oh. I, don't, I don't think it's moon plan because... <laughs> You know, that's ridiculous. You've always got a moving plan. You'd never forget it. I don't think you've forgot to get your walk out because walk is what you call little James and you'll always remember that. <laughs> so I think it's worm ident. Uh, you're actually wrong. It's moving plan. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. what. Well, I underlined it. I don't know what that is, but I know that, that was the thing. As if you, thing. As if you know, I, you might have underlined it no, because no, you were just no, underlining it. I think. Choose? I think, I genuinely think it's yeah. because I moved pharmacies and it's moved pharmacy, mooing plan, and uh, didn't f- yeah. didn't remember that I'd moved pharmacies, so went to the wrong pharmacy to get my meds. But I don't know, it could be mooing plan. But anyway, that makes it 11-9. I think you're still in it the league. It does in now. a way, in a very in real a sense. This and is the most infuriating episode of the shittiest game in the world I've ever fucking had. <laughs> Fuck off. Amazing. But it's made me happy. <laughs> Look at his face. We'll take a break and come back in part three for more physical and emotional pain. It's an audio medium they can't. Welcome back to episode 106. No, 108 Eight. of the ADHD Adults Podcast. This is part three where we're going to give you our top tips. But we're not, are we really? James, <laughs> you're saying that because I'm the only one that's got anything written down. I know, <laughs> yeah, I've got, I haven't got any tips for this. Fucking give me some, ding, <laughs> ding. <laughs> give that's me a big thing that is. I, I, I would assume that this is probably a big issue in relationships because, mm. again, not not being able to express how you feel, or not particularly not understanding how your partner might be feeling is clearly something that as part of the smorgasbord of ADHD related ADHD problems can be an issue. And we always say in relationships, the most important thing is communicate. Now, obviously, if you can't communicate how you feel, you can't communicate that, but you can certainly communicate if you can build an open and honest framework, things like, have I, have I upset you or, or do you, do you like that ding? Because if you if you're just not sure, then actually having that certainty is something that can be really useful. If, if your partner struggles to explain how how they feel, if you're listening to this because you, you don't have ADHD and you're supporting them, or maybe both of you have ADHD, um, then be patient. Um, because if if somebody genuinely can't even understand, let alone express how they're feeling, it will be difficult. I think psychoeducation. There is some evidence can help unless Alex does it. Um, and there's a little bit of evidence 
around around mindfulness, which obviously some of us can manage to do. It doesn't have to be your your headspace sitting on a chair screaming at the screaming at the the uh, your phone after five seconds. Of course, you can feel the fucking legs against your chair. You sat on it, um, and also improving sleep. Um, there's some evidence it might help. So those would be Thanks. my tips, Sam. Yeah, I haven't really got any tips. I think being aware that it's a thing helps because I never knew before. So I just presumed that I was just really shit at, well, I am really shit at describing how I'm feeling. That's exactly what it is, isn't it? It's not shit at it, is it? Yeah, I didn't know it was a thing, if that if that makes sense. So yeah. I think being aware of it is good. And and then once you're aware of it, kind of explaining what you can. What you can. So sometimes I might say to James, I don't, I'm feeling strong things. I don't know what it is. It's like a, a fog and just kind of explain what you can, I guess, and maybe explain to other people that, listen, I, this is something that I can't really explain very well. Um, yeah, it might help me next time I go to the GP because previously I think they've just been like, what the fuck? <laughs> I've got no idea what is wrong with you. I've got something in this general area that's going on. I haven't really got any tips with this. Um, Al? After just, after yeah, just giving couple. several tips. After just giving several <laughs> tips, I haven't really got any tips. Yes, but actually, it's one of the ones, I exactly one of the ones I would have given Sam. So I think it's really good. I didn't even know um, I'd given one. Yeah, there were three, and, and I've got three, and that one is one of them. So it's, yeah, it's starting to be aware of it. And then the second one is if you are going to an environment where you know you're kind of expected to do that, especially if there's any emotional dysregulation behind it, like going to the GP is a brilliant example, or any work environment, write it down in advance before the emotions get really strong, um, how you're feeling, and even write down the phrase you would like to use to say, I struggle expressing these things in this kind of environment because it is slightly ableist. We're all suddenly expected to neurotypically be able to verbally go, I'm not happy with, we, we, we don't do that as well. And it's not, it's okay to say that, but it's not easy to say that just without preparing it. Maybe on your phone, have a few sentences of how, of how you would really like when you're peaceful, someone to understand you. And then to say, I'm going to read this out and have it in prep. So that's my, my second one. The third one really is that this is about success. It's about when you're feeling these things and you can't get that across to a partner or something. At that moment, what actually would you like? How, how can they help you? So instead of expressing what you feel, what would be useful right now for you? So Sam, do you, when you're when you're can't express those things, for example, to James, do you actually want him to know, or would you rather just not talk about them? What what would work at that moment, or is it does it does it depend? It 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 depends because sometimes I really want him to understand yeah. how I'm feeling so that he mm. can help me. Um, yeah, it, but I just can't explain it. So when when it's the other, when it's you, you don't need any help. Yeah, start with that. So I, I, I'm going to struggle with expressing this. And actually, I don't need anything. I'm just chatting shit. But when you do need support, say that. So I'm gonna, can I have a bit of time? Because I'm, I can't do this very well, but I'm going to have a go. I mean, Bibbly Bonk has gone up the booble, you know, and, and, and then you have a bit, you've got a bit of space to try and clarify what those things mean. So really, it's asking... Ask I'd yourself, say what, booble what you is anus. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've put a Bibbly Bonk right up my booble. Yeah, again, so. and that's why I'm banned from every every Oliver bonus. <laughs> See, every time that gag has made me laugh, Alex. <laughs> no. It's a running joke with my brother, so much so that I asked the people in Oliver bonus last week when I was in England if I could take a selfie with them with the site. They were fucking baffled. I bet they were. I'm actually banned from that one. That's oh. it. Those are my top tips. Oh, okay, right. good. In advance. <laughs> Thank God. Um, um James, take us yeah home. no i will take us up well uh, yeah so that was episode 108 of the adhd adults podcast adhd and alexithymia which also happens to be alex's uh, drag name Aww. if by a miracle you enjoyed this episode then why not support the charity on the link provided because otherwise alex will have to carry on letting mordor use his head for filling in for sauron's eye on weekends <laughs> as usual if you want to get in touch I don't know what that then... means contact us on the socials or via discard discord whatever i've called it in the past see you soon yeah. bye bye all trigger warning clacks on clacks on clacks on clacks on big clacks on trigger warning clacks on clacks
on the clock song. Clock song.